my favorite teammate of all time. Of course, I'm talking about Indianapolis Colts quarterback, Phillip Rivers. PR17, what's up, Bo? Gosh, I still, it's still a little bit weird to hear that, Indianapolis Colts quarterback. <laughs> but uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting used to it. What's going on? Oh, man, when I was cutting the promo yesterday, Phil, I was like, I had to like replay it. I'm like, wait a minute. Indianapolis Colts, Indianapolis Colts. I had to say it over again because, hey, <laughs> you spent a long time, obviously, there with the Chargers, but now in a new spot. How's everything going so far? Uh, it's going good. I tell you, uh, it's just been a little bit crazy. I've, I've still yet to walk into the building. So yeah. uh, here it is, July 16th, and I uh, um, haven't, haven't walked in the building yet, but it's been it's been good. You know, all the Zoom meetings and everything, uh, you know, meeting a bunch of new teammates and um, – Similar system, pretty much the same system from from the Chargers. Obviously, you change terminology somewhat, but you know, being with Frank and Nick again, uh, that's been uh, comforting. So um, it's been a, it's been a good off season. Hopefully, uh, hopefully get things get things rolling here soon. I've got to imagine being there with Frank Reich there with the Chargers and, ha- and having one of the biggest years of your career. I've got to imagine that was comfortable walking into that situation, knowing that y'all played well of, uh, off each other, and he knows your strengths, you know his strengths. And you can kind of move forward with that, even though everything else is kind of new. Um, huge, huge. It was, um, you know, it, it, we we had a good handful of years. You mentioned the success on the field. He and I um, really grew close, you know, both on and off the field. But as far as you know, just in the in the meeting rooms, uh, just in conversation, we just we communicated well together. Anyway, and you know, so. That, that that was definitely big. I just really believe in believing in him as both a man and a coach. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, Nick Sirianni was there even longer uh, with the Chargers, and uh, we had a great rapport as well. He was in the quarterback room for a little bit with a wide receiver. Um, th- those those uh, two factors were definitely definitely a uh, a big positive. Now, Philip, one of the things I always tell our listeners is when we got someone new in our locker room, you were always the first guy to meet them. You learned, hey, where'd you go to college? And, of course, we'd always you know, throw jabs at wherever they went to college. We'd have fun. But you were a guy that you wanted to make sure that you learned all of your new teammates. You made it a purpose to learn about them, their family, whatever it might have been when they came into the locker room. And so I've got to imagine this process, you've been trying to learn about your new teammates, learn about you know where they're from, who they are, what they've done, even though you kind of know them from afar, I just know you, and I know it's been something you've been trying to do. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is. I, I, I've always thought that was important, and you know, being one of the guys is, is one of my favorite parts of, of this whole game is being a teammate. So, um, I, it, it, I got some work to do with that with this group, just because, of it, like you said, it's just been it's been unique to say the least. Uh, you know, we have gotten together and thrown with some. I, you know, I've gotten together and thrown with some guys. We had a, a, a pretty good sized group that got together about a month ago, and and work, but I haven't really met all the guys in person. There's only so much you can get done in, in a Zoom meeting. But so uh, got some work to do in that regard, which we all know. Training camp, shoot, it's the those are the that's when a lot of that bonding comes. You know, yeah. sitting up late night snacks and and uh, and joking around and telling stories and all that. Uh, you know, cutting up in the locker room, sitting there after a long practice, all those things. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, with these guys and building that rapport and that camaraderie that, that uh, you and I both know is, is uh, not only is it a lot of fun, it's very important in, in uh, you know, the team coming together and how things shake out as the season goes. One of my favorite things, and I'm glad you mentioned that, was snack during training camp, Philip, because some of my best stories come from that time. We'd be sitting around a table, Nick Hardwick, who played for Purdue, uh, Charlie Whitehurst, who's uh, about as country as they come, you, me, obviously being from the South, Billy Bullock being from the West Coast, we would sit there and we would say, well, how do you say that word up North? Well, how do you say that word down the South? And we would have so much fun just talking about where we were from, different ways that we you know, grew up in the different cultures there. <laughs> no question. You know, it makes me laugh because when you start to say that, I immediately think the first thing I think about is it a basketball hoop or a basketball goal? <laughs> And because uh, that would be the one that would come up every single year. And I'll tell you this, whether it's a hoop or a goal, it's almost like uh, you can't officially live in Indiana unless you have one in the driveway. I'm telling you right now, you've never seen as many basketball goals in the driveway as here. It is every house. It's awesome. I mean, I, of course, I love it. That's kind of how I grew up, too, in the yeah. South. But you and I, basketball hoops going to be in it. Basketball goals in the driveway. So, um 
uh, that that uh, makes me laugh. And then and then you mentioned Hardwick, which uh, is crazy that you know all the time. You know, obviously we're, we're uh, awesome teammate of both of us, uh, to both of us, and out there in San Diego. And now he literally lives. He moved back here. Yeah. You know, and he's six, six, six miles. We, we live six miles apart. So all that time we spent together out there, and then here we are, six miles apart, and. Uh, in northern, you know, north of Indianapolis, and it's uh, it's crazy. So he and I have been getting together and working out in the morning. It's been kind of cool to uh, almost uh, kind of recreate somewhat uh, those early morning weight lesson sessions we would have. Uh, here we are, you know, shoot, seventeen years from from when we were rookies together. All right. Well, can can you keep up with Nick now? Because we had Nick on the show not that long ago, and let's just say my man is putting some work in. No, 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 I, no, I can't. My <laughs> oldest, my oldest daughter, Hallie says, are you a little bit intimidated working out with Vic? So, uh, no, I can't keep up. He's a machine and, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. He's doing a little coaching up here as well. And some of the players telling you didn't play center in the NFL, you know, <laughs> they just can't believe it. I mean, the guy's six, whatever he is, three or four, 230 pounds and can run around and flexible and do anything strong. So it's uh, yeah, he he, he could uh, have a hard time convincing that he played center if you just saw him saw him walking down the street. Oh, there's no question about it. So you did mention moving to uh, Indiana up there. I don't think our listeners understand how big of a fan of the movie uh, Hoosiers that you truly are. Like that would be like your go-to sports movie. I would assume as many times as I've heard you talk about that movie. So I, I've got to imagine, you know, in the back of your mind when you're signing with the Colts, you're like, okay. I'm basically going to go to Hoosier land right now. Make it a good one, Strap. No, there's no, <laughs> there's no question. It's, hey, the timing, too, of, of us visiting right now uh, on your show is ironic because we're talking about watching Hoosiers tonight, actually. We haven't watched it yet since we've been here. And I go, guys, it was it literally happened right down the road. I mean, Butler University's right here. You know, the, the, the high school's not far from here. I go, we got to, it's time to, we got to bring it back out and watch it. No better time than now. So, um, yeah, it's, it is pretty cool being here and as to like, making that trip over to the gym where they shot the movie and shoot, I mean, it, it just, uh, it's cool. I mean, it's one of those, it's one of those classic sports movies and, and, uh, we've had that, we've had a, we've had a poster in our quarterback room in San Diego now forever of Jimmy Chitwood with the, with the phrase, I'll make it. It's oh, kind yeah. of just been on the, on the wall for the last, shoot, I don't know how many years. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a, a uh, little short road trip we're going to have to make over to check out the uh, check out where it all started. Welcome to Indiana basketball. Catching up with Philip Rivers here on Hanging with Hester and Haney, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. It's funny, every question that I have for you, Phil, you keep bringing up great memories when, when you say something. You said Butler there. Now I'm thinking about the time that me, you, Billy, uh, Volick, and Charlie Whitehurst, <laughs> almost the day of the national championship game, we were trying to get our way to Houston to go to the Butler Duke <laughs> National Championship game, and we almost had it done. I think our wives were like, uh, "Okay, yeah, y'all are crazy. Y'all are not going the day of the national championship game to go watch basketball." But we almost made it in what was one of the best basketball games in recent memory. No question. I'm telling you, yeah, we not did. We at least, at least, we actually thought we could pull it off. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how realistic it was, but we actually thought we could pull it off. The other thing I think of is us going to watch some of the a couple of the Indiana state football championship games. Here we are. We're going to play in the RCA yeah. Dome on Sunday and Saturday or either that Friday night we flew in. I think it was Saturday. You know, we walk over there, get us a seat, and watch the little Indiana high school football. So um, there's a long list of, of memories like that, finding a good place for a stake in different towns that, uh, that, that make it the best. I mean, I think that's why, uh, you know, we could sit here, no doubt. We had a lot of good um, – game memories and fun moments on the field, but it's all those other things that just make it what it is. And which is another reason why shoot, I'm still thankful and want to do it as long as, yeah. as long as they'll keep me around. It's funny. You mentioned that. I remember, I think it was actually the first year of Lucas oil that we went up there. We were playing the Colts yeah. on a Sunday night game. Ended up, we, we played really well and we beat the Colts uh, that night, but it was that Saturday we were at St. Elmo's. Of course, like everybody did when you go play against the Colts, and when you found out that there was high school state championship games being played across the street, we had to go, right? And so we went, and we sat in the end zone, and I'll never forget, you're like, hey, 
see if any of these guys getting recruited. I'm going to see. And then, like, this running back breaks, like, an 80-yard run. You're like, look him up, look him up. And we pull him up on rivals or whatever. And he's got, like, three offers, one from Kansas, one from K-State, and the other from, from like, Missouri. And so that's a memory that I'll never, never forget. So you you kind of knew, like, at the, you know, the, the, the other part of your career, you might were going to end up a Colt because you were already checking out games in Lucas Oil. <laughs> I, well, it is it is crazy that how things come full circle because I've also uh, in 2007 this is the place where I tore my ACL right before the championship game and and, and I was I was arguing or leaving and fussing with the fans uh, like so many people like to like mention of and I I remember saying I'll be back <laughs> I'll be back and uh, I really was just talking about the game you know I'll be back for the rest of the end of the game but right. little did I know little did I know that. Uh, and it could mean that I'll actually be back and, and here playing for the Colts. So I've actually, I tell you what, I've also found out it's the, this town's great. This the people are awesome. Um, they love the Colts. They're, it's just they've been so welcoming. But they also um, they, they they remember all the things. I mean, they they remember them. So it's uh, they have to. It's almost a little bit of therapy for them, I think, yeah. to get some of those out of their system when we first talk. It seems like those have to come up, and then we can move we can move forward I have to bring up some of those games, which I know for you and I was one of the, one of the best on field memories when uh, Sproles bounced that uh, 30 ISO yeah. and scored in, uh, in Qualcomm to win that playoff game. That was one of the best kind of sporadic high five feeling <laughs> top moment of, of my whole playing career. So I know you remember that one there. It's the Colts there back in 08. Oh, never, hey, I've never been a part of, of a walk-off situation. Like, it happens in baseball all the time. But in football, you just don't have those very often. And then when you have it in the postseason, when you're 8-8, eight and eight, they're 12-4. and four. They had just beat us in our building a couple of weeks before that. Of course, Peyton Manning was the quarterback, and Bob Sanders was a missile still back then. So to be able to 30 ISO walk them off with Sprolesy doing that, that's like top three memories of, of, of sports for me all time, and it will never be replaced. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. I'm not, you know, yeah, I, it's really it's hard to it's hard to describe it, but it was uh, it, it was it was one of the few, like you said, walk off moments that don't happen very often. So, um, but yeah, so those usually get brought up early on in the conversation here, and then, uh, <laughs> but uh, the people are the people are excited. I'm excited to be here again. They've been great to our family and just early, you know, short time we've been here, and um, kind of excited excited to see it. See it. See it all happen. It'll be it'll be uh, certainly different. It's certainly a change up, but uh, so far so good. All right, last one, and I appreciate your time, Philip. I know we got to get it, get you out of here. So your brother, obviously Stephen Rivers, played for LSU, continues to follow LSU. So I've got to imagine last year was a good year for him. Did you have a chance to watch the LSU Tigers and then reinvent themselves offensively, get the Heisman Trophy quarterback, now the national title? Hey, I'm telling you, yes, I did. Steven still follows like crazy. He's, he's, he's in his LSU gear every uh, every Saturday during the fall. And um, uh, Yeah, I, I watched him quite a bit last year. And, 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 and actually, um, so it was un- unbelievable. Uh, the whole team, obviously, but what they did offensively, uh, both Burrow and shoot all the, all the other shoot skill guys. And then the offense, like you said, it was kind of a, it was, it was, it was different to watch, watch, LSU's offense spread out and do all the things they did, but it was the, it was exciting. So it was a, a heck of a year they had. Um, obviously, a lot a lot of guys to replace, but uh, knowing uh, knowing the type of program they have down there, and Coach O, and shoot the long history they have of success, I'm sure they'll be ready to uh, put together another big time big time team and, and compete for another championship. All right, there he is, Philip Rivers. Man, good enough to join us for a couple minutes here. Philip, I appreciate your time, man. Been wanting to do this for a very long time. Best of luck to you. By the way, uh, I'm going to find a way. You can't be playing, you know, you're going to be playing the Texans. And if I'm allowed, I'm finding a way to get into that game. I'm coming to watch you a couple times this year, already starting to plan those things out. So I'm looking forward to that, man. Awesome, Jake. Appreciate it. Good talking to you. I'll see you.